when people have that stress response attenuated, then all their creativity starts to flow. And so you then can get in touch with your creative side. You aren't hampered by stress and you don't carry that stress into the future because research shows that like unresolved childhood stress results in greater levels of cancer, heart disease, hepatitis, diabetes, all kinds of, of physical ailments after the age of 50. But if you go and heal your childhood trauma, then you aren't carrying that burden, which dramatically affects your life. I did one study and we looked at cortisol in this large scale, triple blind, randomized controlled trial. And we found that EFT dropped anxiety and depression in one hour, more than an hour of talk therapy and more than an hour of rest more than twice as much, actually, as talk therapy. So you throw in the tapping, it has a much bigger effect, and cortisol plunged in that hour. Welcome to Wedding Go and the Greatest Secret, where we explore the end of your suffering and the beginning of lasting happiness. I'm Hale Dwoskin, and today I'll be talking with Dawson Church. Dawson Church is an award-winning science writer with three best-selling books, The Genie in Your Genes, Mind to Matter, and Bliss Brain. He has conducted dozens of clinical trials and founded the National Institute for Integrated Health Care to study and implement promising evidence-based psychological and medical techniques. Its largest program, the Veterans Stress Project, has offered free treatment to over 20,000 veterans with PTSD. So, welcome Dawson. It's it's a thrill to have you here. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun discussing all the ways that the, what you do and what I do are very much aligned and you have some amazing gifts to share with the world. So uh, let's, let's start out by uh, just telling uh, everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. I love sharing because like most of us, what we do now is a result of our origin, our past, our story, our experiences. And, um, I really came into science and came into psychology and came into personal growth from the standpoint that a lot of people in coaching and therapy do, which is being really miserable. Like, you know, if you go go, go <laughs> poll therapists, Hale, you find that half of them, uh, half, half of them are miserable already still, and they virtually all were miserable to begin with, which is why they chose psychology as a profession. And so at 15, <laughs> 12, 13, I was just one of those miserable kids, just depressed, anxious, suicidal, uh, had a pretty rocky upbringing. And so I, I, I figured I had to do something to fix myself. In fact, when I was when I was 15 years old, I remember walking past a, a full length mirror and looking at myself, you know, bell bottom trousers and a book bag slung over my shoulder and hair down to here. And, and I looked into my own eyes, Hale, and I said to my, my self-talk was, that's the saddest face I've ever seen. And I realized, man, you're so messed up. You got to do something to fix yourself. So I went and I ran away from home, joined an ashram, joined a spiritual community, spent years there. Didn't help very much. I did meditate and I did learn the world's great perennial philosophies, Krishnamurti, Alan Watts, all those people. But uh, then I thought, well, you know, spirituality is moving the needle very much for me. So try psychology. So I signed up for correspondence courses and I began to do psych get into psychology and personal growth. And I found I made progress. But when I when I was 45 years old, I had a moment of real crisis one one year. And I made the resolution to meditate every single day. I'd been a very spotty meditator before that, but that that one moment I realized in that moment of crisis at 45 years old, I needed to meditate every single day and make that commitment. And I did. And it was hard because I had to get up early in the morning, even earlier than I wanted to get up. But I did and began to do it every single day. And within just a few months, I learned energy therapies. I found that my whole world, money world, my relationship with my children, my love life, my profession, everything began to shift in positive ways. And then I got into energy therapies, especially tapping. And I looked at them and realized that I was seeing 
change of an order of magnitude greater than I'd seen before, especially when therapists began telling me, hey, you know, I, I just worked with a, uh, a soldier that got back from Iraq or Afghanistan, or I just worked with a Vietnam veteran, and I did five sessions and their, their PTSD was gone. So I realized that I needed to get much more deeply involved in promoting those, those therapies and studying them. So I then began to do simple research, eventually randomized controlled trials, eventually biological research on these new energy therapies. And they were just amazing. I, I applied them to my, myself and then began to write popular books about them. I wrote The Genie in Your Genes in the early 2000s about the link between epigenetics and how our thoughts and consciousness shifts in emotion, especially literally are triggering a cascade of gene expression. And it's been uh, wonderful to live like the last 20 years as a happy person rather than the first 20, which were pretty miserable and de depressed. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always nice, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I, I've had both, both experiences. This one is better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It is certainly better to be happy. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about the, um, you, your wait, is your latest book, The Bliss Brain? Yes, Bliss Brain so, is my newest book because I, I wrote that book out of surprise because I, in 2017, my wife and I were uh, really blindsided by a wildfire and um, I, my I'd written my early book, Mind to Matter. It hadn't come out yet, but I, uh, I had the book like in the cloud. And then we had this just sudden overnight catastrophe where my wife woke me up at 12.45 a.m. I looked at the clock. It was flashing 12.45. I looked out the window. I saw a glow on the horizon, ran outside, and this wildfire was just sweeping toward our house. And so we just had time to grab our car keys and throw in some clothes and and drive out as the all the the trees were catching fire above our heads as we drove out of there and so we made a narrow escape um we we wound up then a couple of days later a long way away we'd driven a long way away to try and escape several cascading wildfires and um someone texted us a, a photograph of where our house had been and there was a concrete slab and a chimney and then just ash. Same thing with our office. Our office had burned down, our warehouse had burned down, everything had burned down in the fire. And we suddenly found ourselves in this just this turmoil of literally losing everything we had except our car and our, our cell phones. And so we we definitely you know had a I mean start seriously applying meditation, tapping all the things right. we learned. <laughs> But in fact, I was due, like the week of the fire, I was due to go teach a trauma conference in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And so I thought, you know, a couple of days after the fire, my wife was more or less okay. And I thought, I'll just go teach the trauma conference. So the, a week after the fire, less than a week there, I was standing up giving a, a keynote speech. And I've been scheduled to, to speak on, on, on trauma because I, I, I've worked with over 20,000 veterans through our nonprofit who have PTSD. And so I, I've done a lot of work on this. I've done six uh, studies on psychological trauma in veterans. And so I had been planning to do this for, for a year. And after the fire, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna go, go there and do it anyway. But it was kind of funny being there in the you know, addressing a psychology conference a week after the fire, everyone knew I'd lost everything. And like, you know, uh, 200 pairs of eyeballs as all these psychologists are looking me up and down and thinking <laughs> <laughs> how traumatized is this guy applying <laughs> <laughs> all their scales and everything else right yeah away, right? yeah yeah check check that so but so i mean that was that was that was a really shattering experience and then in the year after that i found myself meditating every day which i had been doing then for 20 years and i found myself even having even more profound meditations and hitting these heights of joy that I just hadn't even believed were, were possible. So we had to do, do a little bit of looking at things like anandamide, the bliss molecule, and what happens when you raise serotonin and dopamine, these pleasure molecules, oxytocin, beta endorphin, and they are really potent and they make you feel super hyper good. And so I found myself there after the fire and I wrote that book, Bliss Brain, in the year after the fire, as I was dealing with the aftermath of, you know, the, everything burning down, our, our business went under, all kinds of things happened that year that were hard to deal with on the outer level. But um, I, I realized that 
I wrote one one post for the Huffington Post, one blog post. And I said I used an image from the fire, and when the office burned down, there was one thing in the office that survived, and it was a a statue, a ceramic statue of the Buddha, it was about this high, and it had been stuck in the back of a storage closet and had papers piled on top of it for for maybe ten years. Finally. The office burns down, and the only thing left standing there mm -hmm. in the ashes is the Buddha. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this post for the Huffington Post about how compassion can't burn, and love can't burn, and resilience can't burn, and and gratitude can't burn. And if you've had these things in your neural network and your experience, if they're there in your life, you can lose everything, and yet the important things are still there. So that was the big lesson to me: is that the things that matter are intangible, and you can lose everything and still feel that sense of oneness with what I call in my books non-local mind. You're up there in the space in meditation in which you're simply one with the all that is, and when you come back down to local self and local reality, you're bringing with you that sense of well-being and absolute love that is in that that place of non-local mind and so you have a fundamental sense of wellness that's independent even of fire and de destruction in your life well that that's fabulous it, uh, not the fire part but again it was transformative too so that so the so what is the basic Actually, let's just get right into to tapping. Uh, you know, uh, as you know, I do something called the Sedona Method. Yes. And you, and you do something that uh, is incredibly complementary to that. And so many people who do the Sedona Method tell me that tapping ha helps. And I'm sure you've heard over yes. the decades how much, uh, how complementary uh uh, the Sedona method is to tapping. So for those people who are listening to this, who don't know what it is, uh, can you describe it? And can we take people through a little bit of a taste or experience of it? Yeah. Yeah. And so therapists who've been trained in something like the Sedona method or, or coaches have been trained in the Sedona method or other methods of psychotherapy or coaching find that EFT layers into those really well. And it is especially, it's especially useful when you hit a block. And so when you've find yourself stuck and you aren't making progress, there's something going on there that is um, often subconscious, might be energetic, and that's where tapping EFT is really effective. And so um, we, what we've done over the years is do, initially done a lot of research on the phenomenology about this, what's happening in people's uh, experience about this. And we found that when we measure levels of anxiety, depression, phobias, PTSD, and we use just common instruments like the Beck Anxiety Inventory and the PTSD checklist that the VA uses, and we then administer those questionnaires. And then we we give them, usually, you know, for depression, it's going to be three, five sessions. PTSD, at least, we recommend at least five sessions. We prefer 10 sessions for, for PTSD. Complex PTSD might take more than 10 sessions. And so we then give them that treatment routine with EFT. We then measure their levels of symptoms again. And usually they, they drop dramatically, like people with PTSD drop back into the normal range after that six or 10 sessions of EFT. So we first were measuring what was going on in terms of mood and psychological symptoms after tapping. And then we began to use other techniques like um, like gene assays and hormone tests, measuring hormone before and after, immune system function before and after, heart rate, heart rate variability. Eventually we did EEG studies and MRI studies. And so what we found is that this very simple method, just stimulating acupuncture points, which of course has been done for thousands of years in different cultures, there's evidence showing that acupuncture points were known in Europe at least 6,000 years ago. And we know they were, they were known in China and Japan and, the, and India and the East, but it's pretty new to discover that they were also understood in Europe as being therapeutic. And so for a long time, people have just known that if you stimulate these points on the surface of the skin, either with a needle or with some other kind of, of implement, or simply tapping on them, or like with in Japan with shiatsu massage, pressure on them on these points that people feel feel better and so we began doing that initially 
it, it caught on in the 70s in the US and there was more and more acupressure. And then a few pioneering chiropractors and psychiatrists said, I wonder if this will work for phobias and for anxiety. And we got to apply it there and they thought it did work. And it's really interesting to watch people shift. Like, like one young, young man that I, I worked with at Omega Institute, I was teaching there, and um, he had done several tours in Iraq and he had high level of PTSD. And I'm picking up a, a bottle right now. And in that interview, when I was, when I was talking to him at Omega in a beautiful uh, physical space, somebody picked up a water there. bottle and did this. And this young man just pretty much was ready to dive under the table with, with fear, just hearing a water bottle crackle. And that's what PTSD does. In fact, the longer you have PTSD, the more it rewires your brain for stress and the bigger levels of symptoms people usually get. So um, we, I'd work with people like, like that soldier and then you tap with him. And then literally 30 minutes later, I say to the, the, the person in the room, would you mind picking up your water bottle and doing this again? And he has no reaction whatsoever. He's down to a zero out of 10, from a 10 out of 10 in terms of fear. So you work with, with people and you watch these layers of trauma, traumatic stress just drop off them and it doesn't take long. And so that's the, that's the personal experience of it. And then the symptom measurement of it really, really effective. But what EFT does is if you look at people hooked up to an EEG, when they recall a fear memory, so maybe they're thinking about abuse as a child or they're thinking about a car crash or a divorce or about the, the, the great recession. And what you see in their, their brain is that the fear centers, the hippocampus, the amygdala, all of those parts of the limbic system get highly activated and they, like on, on an MRI, they, they, they glow red. I mean, they're highly activated when people think about that fear memory like that young soldier was thinking about, about small arms fire. And so when we tap with them, stimulate these acupuncture points by tapping on them, you watch that part of the brain, the limbic system and the emotional core just calm down. It's just amazing. It doesn't have, doesn't take 10 minutes. It takes just a few seconds and suddenly it deactivates that. So the thinking about the bomb blast, the thinking about the car crash and the tapping and the emotional brain just calms down because it's getting the signal of soothing and energy balancing from the acupressure points. So that's just very briefly what EFT is and how it works. All right. So get, give us a demonstration so people can uh, start to apply it. And by the way, remember, uh, this is we're recording video, which will be on YouTube, but this is also mostly a podcast. So you'll have to describe where you're tapping. Okay. You're tapping. Good. I'll do <laughs> Don't assume people can see it. <laughs> yeah, I was assuming that. that's why I said I was crackling a water bottle as well as showing you the water bottle for <laughs> those of us who can see it. So, so yeah, I'll describe where the points are. And so there are acupuncture meridians that run up and down in our, our body. There are about 300 points, and then a few of them are used therapeutically in EFT. And so the way you can test EFT very quickly yourself is you have to first start with a memory of something that has a high level of emotion for you, and that's recent. We don't let people go into childhood memories or potentially uh, re-traumatizing memories early on. We recommend that be done with a therapist. But um, pick something from, from two weeks ago, a week ago, recent thing, and don't pick something from the news because there's a lot of really graphic images there and right there right now. So pick something from your own life that annoys you, that annoyed you maybe from a week or two ago. And again, not something that's a 10 out of 10. Um, again, work on those things with a the therapist. Don't pick a, you know, a, 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 a format like this where we can't help you if you get emotionally flooded. So pick something manageable that's maybe a five or a six out of 10 and that is recent, not from your childhood and not a 10 out of 10. So, Hale, I said that three times now. Hopefully people, <laughs> as always, somebody picks something from their childhood and, and 10 out of 10. So, <laughs> we, so we I, I said, obviously can't control that. So I can't just control go for that, it. No, so uh, so you, you've got now your event and just give it a, a number from zero to 10 and give it a very brief 
name. Like if it was a movie, say for example, you uh, somebody cut in front of you in line and that really annoyed you. So you're five out of 10. And the uh, the name of your movie is They Cut in Line. So you've now got a title and you've now got um, a number. Give me even a briefer title if you want to just, just, just line. That's that, that's that's a long, long enough name for you to remember and to reactivate those memory, those memory circuits in your brain. And Hale, I want to make you a guinea pig and have you pick one too. So no sure. more than two weeks ago. Mildly annoying. Okay. And what's the name of your event? Uh, the discussion. The discussion. Okay. So that's a neutral event. And, you know, we, when we work with veterans, often they don't want to disclose what it is they're working on because it can be just deep. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Triggering. It can be so, horrific. Yeah. Yeah. We just get a neutral title from them. And the discussion is a good one. And then as you tune into your body, what's your number? Well, that's kind of hard because even though it's relatively recent, there there's not much charge with because charge doesn't usually stick here. But it came up, so I'm sure there's something. So I'll give it a two. <laughs> give it a two. Well, just tune into that two. Where is the two in your body? Uh, let's see at the back of my head and in my stomach. Okay. If you had to pick one of those two spots, back of the head and the stomach, which is the most intense? Probably the back of my head. Back of your head, okay. And really let yourself feel that sensation in the back of your head, Hale, and see if it's lit too, or as you tune into it and become mindful of it, is it changing it's dissolving <laughs> i might not be a very good <laughs> so it's still about a two or <laughs> now it's about a point five. Point five. Yeah, yeah you're a terrible client <laughs> okay, for your childhood make it a 10 <laughs> <Not really. laughs> yeah okay, no, just just think the most annoying person in your life right now the most annoying thing they say <laughs> okay <laughs> okay and think of think of that thing they say think of those words all right <laughs> And what's your number now? Oh, God, it only went up to a one. <laughs> and it just is all. Looks like we're heading for complete failure here, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do enough healing, and, you know, it's like, when, when, after a while, when you find something, it's like, oh, goody, I found something to tap on. I found something to work on. Right, like, right, right, stuff, right, 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 right. Hey, can we somebody... do this? Is there another way to, can you just do this? I'm not trying to be difficult. It's just that I think uh, I'm not going to make a good, um, uh, a, a good uh, a person for this because anytime, what happens for me is, is whenever I focus on anything that even a few moments ago had any kind of stress or tension or anxiety or whatever, I guess the, even those f f uh, descriptors are not often not even accurate anymore. As soon as there's a focusing on it, it dissolves. So uh, something we do, which I'm sure you do too, you can't always work one on one if you, you're in front of a whole group. Sometimes you take the whole, do you ever take the whole group through something? Yes. Can we do it that way? Because, because again, there's going to be 1000s of people listening to this. So can we do this as a more of a process you're going to do with the whole a whole group and take yes. all of us through it at the same time? I was hoping we could do it together, but <laughs> I don't so far think you're it... too relaxed, you're too chill, you're too mellow. <laughs> I apologize again. <laughs> no, no, I, I will do it, and I'll I'll use the phrasing and the wording I would for a group and do it generally. Perfect. But Perfect. I want you to have at least something. I mean, I'll take a half if that's the best you got. But, um, uh, you know, anything anything that was a three or a four or a five in the last couple of weeks? <laughs> a three. 
three or four or five. Not really. <laughs> okay, go back a month. Uh, uh, should I do a longer distance, <laughs> a longer time? <laughs> you, you, yeah, as long as like right now, Hale, you're feeling some physical signal from your body saying that this isn't quite resolved, whatever it might be. And even pick one you've worked on with the Sedona method or other kinds of methods, because usually with when we start doing energy work, we'll find that like we'll have therapists who say, oh, I I, I worked on that a lot. And then we get into the energy level and they find there's still some residue there. Oh, yes, on. of course, of course. It, it, it's important to inter integrate all levels. Okay. I, I can think of something, yeah. Okay, so give me the name, just a one or two word name of that little scene. Um the bed the bed yeah okay the bed okay and then what's your number on that memory uh probably a two two okay okay so you've got your name you've got your number and for everyone listening or watching just go ahead and find your event again a recent event and get your number and you can get a number usually by just tuning into your body and seeing where you feel it like Hale felt it in his gut in the back of his head and then get a number of zero to ten because we want you to have that number it's important you have that number before and after so you can see if if the tapping and the energy work is really effective for you so we measure it before and after so uh so go ahead and get your number get your event and then write those two things down Again, it's important because in our research, people's numbers often fall so quickly, their left brain has a hard time recognizing that they have shifted so fast. So we have people write that down. So write it down on a piece of paper, on your device, just make sure you have it written down somewhere. And then we'll just simply apply pressure to each of these key acupuncture meridian points and then see what shifts for you. So start by tapping on the side of your hand right below the joint that anchors your little finger with the fingertips of the other hand. So again, the side of your hand right below the joint that anchors your little finger. That's your small intestine meridian. Keep your eyes open as you tap and really focus intently on that event. And while you're focused there, notice that you're breathing. Notice you're, you're safe right this very moment. And just accept the fact that you are who you are right now. You're in the here and now. And you're breathing and you're safe. So however bad that event was, you got through it and you're safe now. But think about the event. Focus on the event as you tap. Now tap on top of your head, just flat hand on the very top of your head. That's your governing meridian. Really tune into the event. So Hale, you're focusing on the bed. We're all focusing on that thing that bothered us. And we're breathing. And we made it through, we're safe now. Now tap where your eyebrow meets the bridge of your nose with two fingers. Keep your eyes open. Focus on the event. All the details of the event. What did you see? What did you hear? Taste, touch, smell. Really focus on the detail of the event while you tap. This is your bladder meridian. Now tap on the side of your eyes, 
either both sides or one side. Keep breathing. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed and really focus on that event. In psychology, we call this exposure. You're really keeping your attention focused, exposed to the event while you tap. Now tap under the pupil of your eyes. Again, focus on the event, light up all those neurons that carry the signals of that memory. Focus on the details, what you saw, heard, smelled, touched, tasted during the event. Keep breathing, keep your shoulders relaxed. Notice you're safe right now. Tap under your nose. Again, focusing on the event. Tap on your chin. Keep breathing, keep your eyes open. Keep your attention on the event. All the details of the event. Tap your collarbone meets your breastbone, right under your collarbone. Notice your breathing. Recall the details. What was the worst detail of the, of the event? Was it something you tasted, touched, smelled, heard, saw? Think of the very worst detail of the event while you tap here. This is the kidney meridian. Notice you're safe. Notice your breathing. And that bad event already happened. You're now focusing on the worst part of that event. Then cross your arms, tap under your arms. That's your spleen meridian. Just balancing the energies there. While you focus on the event, and notice you're safe. You made it through. Tap one more time on the side of your hand. Focusing on both the event and the current safety of where you are. And that detail of the event. Notice your breathing. Keep your eyes open. Then stop tapping, relax, and think back to the event and get a new number. You've now balanced all the meridians of your body by tapping. If we had a galvanometer, I'd be measuring your skin conductance. Those points would be changing. If we had an EEG hooked up to your, your occipital lobe in your brain, we would see a very different signature now as you think about the event. We'd see your emotional brain having calmed down. And that's reflected in your number. So like, Hale, what's, think about the bed. And what's your new number? Zero. Zero, yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually people will drop several points when they do this, not always to a zero. For those of you who haven't dropped to a zero, let's just add one other little technique that generates a lot of slow brain waves, which again are characteristic of safety in your brain. So tap on the groove between the bones that anchor your little finger and your ring finger. On By the, the way, does it matter hand. which hand? No, either hand. Okay. So tap now on the groove, that's your triple warmer meridian, between the bones that anchor your knuckles of the ring finger and little finger. Tap there with three or four fingers. And then this generates a lot of slow waves, which we have when we sleep and we work out problems symbolically in dreams. So we move our eyes like we do in rapid eye movement sleep and just try moving your eyes, first of all, to look all the way down without moving your head. So you keep your head steady, but look all the way down. Now look all the way to your left. Now look all the way up without moving your head, eyes only. Now look all the way to the right. Look all the way down again. Now we'll do it the other way, other direction. So look all the way to your right again while tapping, while breathing, focusing on the event. Look all the way up, keeping your head steady. 
look all the way to the left, look all the way up again at the ceiling or the highest point you can possibly move your eyes to, then stop tapping and relax. And just feel your body. Remember you're safe. And if you weren't down to a zero, you should have gone down at least a few more more points. And then often people don't go down to a zero at first. Within a few minutes, their energy system settles back down and they'll they'll drop the rest of the way down. And we're you know we're doing this with with uh, with people who have issues. I mean, they may have problems at work, problems in their their relationships, problems with money. But we've done this with victims of the Parkland, Florida school shootings. We've done this with victims of the Newtown, Connecticut school shootings. We're doing it with victims of the Uvalde, Texas school shootings. We've done it with Rwandan refugees who escaped the Holocaust in Rwanda in 1994. We've done it with people who were in Hurricane Katrina. We have teams, volunteer teams at various disasters that go and help people afterwards and work with the Red Cross or Red Crescent. So this has been shown effective, even in countries where people have very, very few resources. We all have the same energy systems and the same right. basic anatomy. <laughs> and true. so it can help us all to shed stress and to release all that, that old imprinting from trauma. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. I, again, even though... Uh, I wasn't a, a, a good uh, subject. I still could feel uh, that the tapping on the points uh, still opens and relaxes the energetic flow in the body mind. So yes, uh, even though there that I didn't have don't have a lot of uh, trauma or anything like that I carry around with me, it still was beneficial seems like this would be something beneficial to do even if you didn't have an issue isn't it it is it can just settle you and balance you it also can work on unconscious levels so i know when i wake up in the morning i usually do some tapping just to release any residue from dreams like you may have been working out stressful events in your life symbolically in dreams and that tapping will help you get ready for meditation get ready ready for your day and so whatever you you need stress relief even if that's just a feeling, an uneasy feeling, not attached to a memory, EFT can help you balance. That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> it's simple too. It's you know, two minutes and you feel better. Yes, definitely. And you know, and I, I, I'm a firm proponent of, of not only EFT, what you do, but acupuncture in general. I have a acupuncturist I go to occasionally here where I live and I've done that off and on my whole life. And I studied um, Shiatsu when I was 18. Okay. Uh, so I was exposed to these things. Uh, let's see, 18, 16, 40 years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was impressed from the very beginning. Yeah, well, it, what's been so surprising, Hale, has been the scale of the... Um, the, the effect of adding acupressure to various kinds of psychotherapy, like exposure is a really well-known method. And the cognitive framing we're giving this is we're saying, I'm safe now. So you're placing that traumatic event when you definitely were not safe into a reframe of safety. And reframing comes from cognitive therapies. So we're bringing in bits and pieces of other therapies. There's a lot more to EFT than what I showed you. That was a very basic demonstration, but it, that's why I say you layer it into other forms of therapy and it very rapidly reduces the stress response. And then when people have that stress response attenuated, then all their creativity starts to flow. And so you then can get in touch with your creative side. You aren't hampered by stress and you don't carry that stress into the future because research shows that like unresolved childhood stress results in greater levels of cancer, heart disease, hepatitis, diabetes, all kinds of, of physical ailments after the age of 50. But if you go and heal your childhood trauma, then you aren't carrying that burden, which dramatically affects your life. I did one study and we looked at cortisol in this large scale, triple blind, randomized controlled trial. And we found that EFT dropped anxiety and depression in one hour, more than an hour of talk therapy and more than an hour of rest 
more than twice as much actually than as, as talk therapy. So you throw in the tapping, it has a much bigger effect and cortisol plunged in that hour. Another study I did looked at, at uh, cortisol over the course of a week. And in one week, there was a dramatic drop, 37% drop in cortisol and a 113% rise in immune markers. So when cortisol goes down, when stress goes down, your body repurposes all those molecules for really useful things like building immunity. And so we, we were just amazed to look at that result and see that that immune function rose by over 100%, 113% in that, that that study. So we are doing ourselves a huge favor to add this into whatever else we're doing. It's not, not to say you don't do all the other things you're doing for self-care as well. Do all of those. I mean, you have a great doctor, have a great therapist, do use acupuncture, alternative medicine, nutrition. Those things are powerful and you need all, all those as well, but throw in the stress reduction effects of tapping. Great, good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> so uh what's the best way for someone to uh contact this work now there are two things that you can get at my website one is the eft mini manual and over three million people have downloaded the mini manual over the last 10 years. So a lot of people have downloaded that mini manual. It's just great. It's very simple, about 60 pages, and you'll it'll show you how to do EFT. But also after we did that immunity trial, we we created a special meditation that brings in tapping and other kinds of activities like the quick coherence technique from heart math, biofeedback, neurofeedback, visualization. And again, that style of meditation we showed in another study also right raises immunity so at my on my website tapping gift just the word tapping just like regular tapping gift.com you get both a mini manual and the immunity meditation in one in one location and also access to our practitioners we have we have thousands of certified practitioners. We have an app called Stress Solution where you can work with a practitioner yourself. We have a lot of self-help tools, tons of free stuff at tappinggift.com. And so we really want to encourage people to go there, use the app, have a practitioner on call, and then just learn these simple self-help routines to help them set up a good meditation practice in the morning, get effective help, and then tap whenever they're stressed. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. I'm glad we had. I'm glad you exposed uh, everyone to tapping. I, I, I think it's wonderful. It's, fun. it's fun, and you know, when you start to do these things, Hale, what you discover is that your life can be just so much better. And like after the fire, when I was hitting those spaces in meditation, and I wrote the book Bliss Brain, you are changing so many things about your body. You're changing your cortisol levels. You're changing gene expression. There have been several studies of gene expression with EFT, and we literally see the genes that code for stress biochemistry dialing down. Those that code for immunity are dialing up. And so now you're doing these simple techniques, and you're literally having an effect on your body. Ultimately, you're having an effect on your, your longevity. So it's just worth playing around with these wonderful techniques. We have them now, and we can apply them in any situation that stresses us out. We can go and do it proactively and work on our past stressors and our childhood trauma. Again, with the help of the therapist, we want to make sure we don't go into that territory by ourselves. But you can have just so much better quality of life if you're unlocking all your potential by letting go of your stress and then letting the self that you were meant to have shine. So I, I love doing this. It's a real pleasure. And thank you so much for sharing this with the Sedona Method community. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dawson Church. You can learn more about Dawson and receive a free EFT mini manual at DawsonGift.com. That's D-A-W-S-O-N-G-I-F-T dot com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you have immediate access to future episodes. Please give us a five-star rating and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about my work, my mentor, Wester Levinson's work, and the Sedona Method, please visit 
www.sedona.com. As you explore our site, you learn the key to lasting happiness, success, peace, and emotional well-being. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A dot com. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you in the next episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secrets.